Alright, so in Chapter 7, we're going to take a look at the catalytic mechanisms of enzymes, and we're going to start this off with a review of organic chemistry concepts. So briefly in this section, we'll go over the definition of an enzyme, homeolytic versus heterolytic bond cleavage, nucleophiles and electrophiles, electron pushing, acid dissociation constants, and the primary enzyme classifications. Enzymes are catalysts that speed up the rate of chemical reactions, but they themselves are not used up in the process of the reaction. They act by lowering the activation energy required for the reaction to proceed in a forward direction and facilitate the formation of the transition species. They do not alter the free energy of a reaction, nor do they determine the spontaneity of the reaction. So those are key points that you want to keep in your mind as we move forward with the catalytic mechanisms of enzymes. So covalent bonds consist of an electron pair that's shared between two atoms. During heterolytic bond cleavage, the bond pair is broken such that the electrons remain with one of the atoms in the electron pair. In case of a carbon-hydrogen bond, if the electrons remain with the hydrogen, this would form a hydride ion, and the carbon would hold a positive charge and become a carbocation. However, if the electrons remain with the carbon, this would form a carbanion, and the hydrogen would be left as a proton. Both of these situations are possible, depending on the situation. In homolytic bond cleavage, the bond is broken so that the electron pair splits and one electron would remain with the carbon and one with the hydrogen in this example. This is known as radical cleavage and occurs most often in redox reactions and usually requires a metal cofactor in vivo. So now we just want to cover the basics of nucleophiles and electrophiles. Recall that a nucleophile is a chemical species that donates an electron pair to form a chemical bond in relation to the reaction. It's attracted to the nucleus or the positive charge. All molecules are ions with a free pair of electrons or at least one pi bond can act as a nucleophile. Because nucleophiles donate electrons, they are by definition Lewis bases. The vast majority of the nucleophilic substitution reactions that you will see in this class is that the electrophilic atom is generally carbon, which is usually bonded to an electronegative atom, something like oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, or a halogen. The concept of electrophilicity is relatively simple. An electron-poor atom is an attractive target for something that's electron-rich, in this case our nucleophile. So the most common nucleophilic atoms are oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The most common functional groups with these features are water, the hydroxide ion, alcohols, phenols, amines, thiols, and sometimes carboxylates. So you can see that the R groups of our polar amino acids, they contain these types of functional groups, alcohols, thiols, You've got amines down here with our basic residues and then the carboxylate anions from our acidic amino acids. We'll see that these are going to be the major players within the active sites of enzymes and they will often be responsible for the biological activity of the enzyme. Sometimes carbons can also act as nucleophiles, especially if they're next to an electron withdrawing group. They can help stabilize the charge state of the carbon atom or essentially lend them with the pi bond where you can have this shift and form the enolate resonance structure. In this state, the carbon can act as a nucleophile. Cyanide is another example of a reactive carbon nucleophile. So in chapter six, we were introduced to the six main types of enzyme classes. We will continue to see examples of enzymes from these classes throughout this term and next term. So each time you see a new enzyme reaction, you should be thinking, which of these classes does it fall into? Recall that oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions 
are a type of chemical reaction that involves the transfer of electrons between two atoms. The substance that loses electrons is said to be oxidized, while the substance that gains electrons is said to be reduced. Redox reactions always have to occur together. If one molecule is oxidized, another molecule has to be reduced. In biological systems, the protons often move with the electrons during the redox reactions and can be used as a way to easily identify this reaction type. In group transfer reactions, a functional group will be transferred from a donor molecule to an acceptor molecule. The transfer of an amine functional group from one molecule to another is a common transfer reaction, and the enzymes are known as amino transferases. The classification of hydrolase reactions includes the forward reaction involving the addition of water to break apart this polymer or macromolecule, and it also refers to the reverse reactions or the dehydration reactions where condensation will occur as water is removed from the molecule to link them back together. Recall that the major macromolecules of the body are assembled using this reaction mechanism. Reactions that mediate the formation and removal of carbon-carbon double bonds are classified as lyases. And in isomerization reactions, a single molecule is going to be rearranged to form a different either structural or a stereo isomer. The conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, the structural isomers, are shown here. And finally, ligation reactions use the energy of ATP to join two molecules together. In this case, the tRNA synthetases are using the energy of ATP to link the amino acid with the transfer RNA, forming a charged tRNA with methionine associated with it. You can see that ATP is broken down in this process, producing one molecule of adenosine monophosphate and the two inorganic phosphates. In the next section, we'll define the major catalytic mechanisms that enzymes use.